Welcome back to Breakfast Television. Parents all dread the phone call from the school your child has been hurt by another child. But what if your child is the one doing the acting out or the bullying? Child psychiatrist Dr. Monique Jericho is here now with what to do if your child is the aggressor. Good morning to you. Good morning. Thank you so much for being here. So what are we talking about when it comes to these children who can be aggressive? Mm -hmm. Well, aggression is a very common reason why children wind up seeing mental health professionals. Okay. So particularly when children are young mm -hmm. uh, and acting out in these ways, um, people have a hard time interpreting what might be going on for them. But that's the critical piece. Okay. Right? So when we do get those phone calls, those dreaded phone calls, or something's happened at school, you know, it's pretty natural as parents for us to feel guilty or for responsible sure. yeah. to become overwhelmed ourselves. And what do we do when that happens? Oftentimes, we can act punitively. Sure. We can blame our child, you know, or we can ask them for explanations that they really don't have. Right. right? Because they don't understand so those emotions. They're so young. And if you think about yeah. as adults, when we're overwhelmed emotionally, we can act out too. For sure we can. We can say or do things that are really ineffective. Yeah, and inappropriate sometimes. That's right. So yeah. it's important to get to the heart of what's going on for the child that's led to this behavior because rarely is aggression a form of malice or oh. something deliberate that a child's wanting to do to harm someone else. Okay, so that's actually not very common. That's right. It's much more about something else going on for the exactly. child. Exactly. Okay, yeah, so exactly. you've come up with five certain points that parents can really right. watch for. Absolutely. So number one, developmental issues. Developmental issues. Oftentimes, kids will be put into situations and classrooms or activities that they're not ready for. Oh. So even if they're intellectually very bright, emotionally, they may not be there. Right. And then the demands of that environment are overwhelming to them. They don't know how to express that they don't know what to do and kaboom right you've got that explosion of emotion that's right oh interesting okay mm -hmm. so then number two language impairment this one's interesting yeah oftentimes people don't realize that there are specific types of language disorders they're called so expressive or receptive language disorders they're prevalent in about three percent of the population and it gets in the way of children being able to understand and express language it has nothing to do with their intellect, right. but it sure gets in the way of them communicating. And imagine being so frustrated in a classroom where you can't communicate basic things and you're not getting it, right? right? And you're just wanting to connect with your peers. You're just wanting to fit in and feel in control of your environment. Right. And when you're not, you're acting out. That's it. Right. Frustration. That's yeah. the big Frustration. sign. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Okay. Number three, ADHD, which sure. is quite common. ADHD, number one diagnosed uh, mental health disorder in children. Wow. 5% of the population, oftentimes diagnosed uh, in early childhood uh, because of this reason. Okay. Right? So these kids have a hard time paying attention. They're impulsive. They're hyperactive. They're getting all of this negative feedback in classroom. Right. Things seem easier for other kids, right? right? And when you're impulsive and you might say or do something uh, without necessarily reflecting or thinking, it's a recipe for disaster. Right, right. Okay, mm -hmm. so that's mm -hmm. something to watch for because that's so common. Yeah. Okay, and then we've got learning disabilities as well, also very common. Also really common, mm. right? Learning disabilities of all different kinds and intellectual disability, once again, oftentimes not picked up until a child enters school. Right. 3% of the population, about. Yeah. And if a kid's not able to keep up, you know, that's a really painful experience. For and sure especially as kids get older, yeah. they appreciate that they're putting in the same effort as their peers. They're not having the same results. Right. right. It's hard. It's hard. Really hard. And then very quickly, because we're almost out of time, we have to talk about conflict in the home. Yes, That can absolutely. certainly turn up, can't it? Yes. So kids will role model what they see. So if there's violence or conflict in the home, um, it's not a surprise if they're going to act that out to better understand it, or that they're going to think it's a viable option to control what's going on in their lives, too. Okay, so much to think about. Mm -hmm. Dr. Jericho, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. We're going to go for a break here on Breakfast Television. When we come back, news, weather, and traffic. Stay with us.